the map coloring problem with five regions where the goal is to assign one of the three colors red green or blue to each region hello everyone welcome or welcome back to being passionate learner in this video we are going to dive into an important concept in the field of artificial intelligence called constraint satisfaction problems or CSPs. These problems are essential because they allow us to frame complex real-world challenges in a structured way, enabling efficient solutions. From the scheduling and resource allocation to puzzles like Sudoku, CSPs are everywhere. Contents. In video, we will begin by understanding what a CSP is, then we will break down the components of CSPs followed by an example to illustrate how they work. We will also look at the formal formulation of CSPs, why CSPs are important, real-world applications of CSPs, variations on the CSP formulation, and we will conclude with types of constraints. Now let's start with what is a CSP? A constant satisfaction problem or CSP is a type of a problem where the objective is to assign values to a set of variables such that all the given constraints are satisfied. CSPs are problems defined by variables, domains, and constraints that must be satisfied. CSP problems are common in areas such as scheduling, resource allocation, and solving puzzles like Sudoku. Now let us see what are components of CSP. A CSP consists of three main components, variables, domains for those variables, and constraints. Variables represent items that need to be assigned a value. Variables can represent any entity such as time slot, colors, or numbers, and the domain refers to the possible values each variable can take. Constraints are relationship between variables that must be satisfied. Constraints specify which combination of values are valid. For example, in a scheduling problem, constraints could specify that two tasks can't occur at the same time. An example of a CSP is the map coloring problem with five regions where the goal is to assign one of the three colors, red, green, or blue, to each region. The variables represent the regions R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5, and the domain consists of three colors, red, green, and blue. The constraint is that no two adjacent regions can share the same color. For instance, if region R1 is red, region R2, which is adjacent, must be either green or blue. Formulation of CSPs. A CSP can be formally defined as a tuple X, D, C, where X represents the variables, D represents the domains of the variables, and C represents the set of constraints. A solution to CSP is a complete assignment of values to variables that satisfies all of the constraints. Why CSPs are important? CSPs are important because they provide a structured way to represent and to solve a wide variety of complex problems efficiently. Whether it's scheduling classes, solving puzzles, or optimizing resource allocation, CSPs offer a clear framework for reaching optimal solutions. Real-world applications of CSPs. CSPs are widely applied in real-world scenarios like scheduling airplane cruise ship, generating exam timetables. In resource allocation, CSPs help optimize how resources are designed in industries. We also see CSPs in puzzles such as Sudoku where each variable must meet specific constraints. In the world of constraint satisfaction problems, there are several variations based on the type of domains involved. First, we have discrete finite domain CSP where the variables have a limited set of possible values. Example include the map coloring problem and the eight queen problem where the possible choices are finite like color or board positions. Next, there are discrete infinite domains CSPs which occur when the set of possible values is theoretically infinite. A great example is the job scheduling problem without a set of deadline. 
In this case, each job could have an infinite number of start times resulting in an infinite domain. Finally, there are continuous domain CSPs where the values can take on any values within a continuous range. These types of problems often involve linear programming where variables are continuous and solutions require optimization over real number domains. Now let's look at the types of constraints found in CSPs. First, we have unity constraint CSPs where constraint restrict the values of a single variable. For example, in the map coloring problem, we might have the constraint that the region of South Australia won't tolerate color green, which can express as a unary constraint SA not equals to green. Next are the binary constraint CSPs, which relate to variables. A binary CSP is a one that involves only binary constraints and can be represented as a constraint graph. For example, in the map coloring problem, the constraint that South Australia's color is different from the New South Wales is binary constraint SA is not equals to NSW. Lastly, there are global constraint CSPs which involve an arbitrary number of variables. One of the most common global constraints is all D, which means all variables must have different values. This is seen in the problems like Sudoku and crypto arithmetic puzzles, where multiple variables need to take on distinct values across the board. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding of CSPs and in next video we will explore methods to solve these problems more efficiently. See you in my next video. Till then, being passionate learner, keep learning. Thank you.